Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. Thanks for stopping by. I'm the core behavioral psychologist, Dr. Trisha Ramprasad. And today we have a really special treat. I am so honored to have famous drummer, I think he's a famous drummer, Brendan Buckley, who plays with Shakira. Um, he's played with Wyclef Sean, Lauren Hill. And um, let me just tell you a little bit about Brendan. He was born and raised in Morristown, New Jersey, and um, specifically uh, Mount Arlington area. And, you know, he was really accessible to New York City, where um, he spent his childhood and high school years just being around a lot of musical inspiration. And at 18, he went to the Miami School of Music and became in diverse rock, immersed in diverse rock, Latin jazz. And he's worked with some huge names and he's a big name himself too. And now he lives in Los Angeles. He's even spent recording time with DMX, Gloria Stefan, Julio Iglesias. And I'm just so grateful that he's here with us. So thanks so much for joining. How are you, Brendan? I'm fine. I'm fine. Jersey strong. Jersey strong. We got a Jersey boy in the house, which is great. <laughs> We're both actually from the same area. We went to the same high school too, which was pretty cool. So I swear, Brendan, I must have prayed and manifested you to be on my show because <laughs> for a couple of my podcasts, I play Waka Waka. And uh -huh. Shakira and you played with her on tour you know and mm -hmm. I think that's just so phenomenal like can you tell us what is your most memorable experience playing uh you know I can't it's all a blur but <laughs> uh no it's it's fantastic I mean I um yeah I'm a professional drummer which means that uh there's a lot of different kinds of professional drummers but what I do is I'm a freelance drummer which means that I record records for people. I go on tour with different people. I play concerts with people. And it all depends on my schedule, my availability, who calls me. And um, uh, so, yeah, I've been working with Shakira since 1998. I've done all of her tours, played on most of her albums. That's and cool. that's been a wild ride because we've gone everywhere and played every TV show and every city. So I really learned a lot about the planet by working with her because we went everywhere and mm -hmm. I got to learn a lot about culture and food people language it was uh that was kind of like my graduate program uh and yeah. you know just yeah. doing that mm -hmm. but I live in LA which is a hub of music so I get to work with a lot of great artists uh this week I'm rehearsing with Perry Farrell he's the singer for a band called Jane's Addiction I was a huge yeah. fan of Dance addiction in high school. Yeah. And uh, next week I'm working with Morrissey. He's the singer for uh, the band in the 80s, The Smiths. So I have a tour coming up with him soon. And yeah, yesterday I was here in this room. If anyone can see this, this is my recording studio in Los Angeles, recording mm -hmm. drums for a, a friend of mine who's a singer songwriter from Australia. Mm -hmm. So every day is different. Sometimes I sit here and do podcasts with people I went to high school with. And sometimes <laughs> I. I play, I play drums for people and that's it. And uh, it's, it's a blast. So cool. I remember in high school, I used to see you in the hall heading to band and I was in choir and you would always be tapping. And I remember that very clearly. So that just shows like how passionate you were. How did you get into drumming and getting into music? Well, I grew up in a small town called Mount Arlington, which is, um, it's, it's Roxbury adjacent, right? And um, I guess I've always been into different kinds of hobbies. And I mean, probably around the age of, I can't even remember, maybe the age of 10 or something, I was break dancing and skateboarding and water skiing and also playing a little bit of piano and trumpet. Mm -hmm. So I, pl I played a little bit of, I studied music a little bit. I played in the band. Uh, but I did a ton of other things too. I played baseball, and, but somewhere along the way, I bought a used drum set off of a friend of mine right. and that it kind of, all these things in my brain started clicking, like the coordination, the rhythm, the rock, the punk, the, yeah. it, it was, it was very energetic. I really enjoyed it. And I would watch MTV every day and imitate all the bands I saw on MTV. And I loved it. And that was probably around the age of 14. And, um, 
That's yeah. Nice. Then I started taking it more seriously, joining mm -hmm. band programs, taking lessons, uh, joining actual garage bands and yeah. playing gigs. And then when I was 18, I, I decided to audition and move to Miami to go to their conservatory. And that's really when I, I guess I went from amateur high school guy to, okay, now this is serious. Now we have to try yeah. to do something with this. Yeah. Did you ever think you would get that serious with it? Or it was just like a hobby no. for you? Yeah. No, it was an interest. It was an interest that I, I couldn't let go of, you know. Yeah. Um, I had no real plan, mm -hmm. but I just enjoyed it so much that I couldn't see myself doing anything else. And so it was difficult for me to think about when I was 17 and I was applying for colleges to go and I was, you know, guessing at majors. Uh, maybe I could be an engineer. Yeah. Maybe I could be, I don't know, maybe I can go into biology maybe i can go into this maybe i can go into law maybe and it was all those are all just guesses right. what i really wanted to do was just put on headphones and play the drums every day yeah and um so fortunately when i was 18 my parents i don't want to say they were understanding because mm -hmm. they didn't understand but they were um lenient enough to let me try a year's worth of music school that's really uh, nice. when you were 18. They said, mm -hmm. yeah, I was 18. And, and I said, listen, all I do when I come home from school is play the drums. Maybe I could do that for college. <laughs> and yeah. and they were like, I don't know how that works, but give it a shot. And if in a year it was a bad idea, then you can transfer somewhere else and, and no problem. Mm -hmm. So I did it for a year and it was fun and great. And so I did it for another year and sophomore, junior year, senior year. And then I graduated and it kind of just kept on going. It was a mm -hmm. just a slow, a slow incline, no big right. jumps, just little by little. So you worked hard for it. And I, it's something really resonated with me when you said something clicked in your brain. And there's actual studies now that music, it does alleviate and lessen symptoms of depression and anxiety in kids around the same age that you picked up the drums. So maybe that got your dopamine and your serotonin and endorphins and all those happy hormones just bursting when you started to play. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, different roles and different instruments might grab people differently. Mm -hmm. I think that the drums really, really suited me. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's something very mechanical and coordinated about it that was really exciting mm -hmm. for me. There was something about being at the back of the stage behind a bunch of equipment. So I didn't have to feel like I was a lead singer or a guy standing with a his little foot. Safe, right? Yeah, a little more protected. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it allowed me to be, if I felt like being shy, you can still be a rocking drummer and be shy at the same time. Oh, it's hard yeah. to be a shy lead singer, but you can be a shy drummer and still, you know, put a lot of energy into it. And I thought also around the, that age, all people are looking for an identity. Right. All kids, you know, yeah. uh, I, whether it's through their click yeah. or through their image or through their activities or, mm -hmm. or or through the music they listen to. We're all looking, we're all trying to create some kind of identity around the age of 14, 15. And I think this also helped with that. It gave me something that I could think was mine. That's so true. You know, good. So I, I, and I think, I think uh, it's, in some ways it was a bit of a crutch, but also in some ways it was a, a lifeboat at the same time, like helping me out through that period of, you know, 14 to 21, where I was, you know, very, I don't know, like uh, I could be indecisive or lost, but I always had that. And that was, uh, that was, that was there for me. I, I absolutely love that. And um, with kids today, with everything that's been happening, I really believe like if you find a hobby or do what you love, you never know where that's going to take you. Um, speaking of identity, what is your ethnicity and cultural identity? Yeah, so uh, my mother is from South Korea. She's from a city called Daegu. Mm -hmm. uh, she moved to the U.S., after college to, to, to be a nurse here. So she moved to Toronto, Virginia, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And my dad is born and raised in New Jersey, but he's Irish heritage, 100%. Mm -hmm. He's the Buckley side of my family. So I'm 50% Irish, 50% Korean. Uh, and I did one of those 23andMe tests to see if there was anything else in there like Neanderthal or Cherokee <laughs> or 
or Nigerian. Or I did one too. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I got nothing. I was pure Korean Irish all the way down for generations. So uh, oh. that's it. There's no mystery there. Uh, but but that was also an interesting uh, upbringing, you know, living in New Jersey, being half Asian and half yeah. Caucasian. What was that like for you? being growing up in New Jersey, especially where we grew up, because we grew up in a small town in the suburbs, you know, close to Lake mm-hmm. Akong area. And um, yeah, what was that like for you at that time? I mean, I have almost nothing but fond memories of my childhood and of Northern New Jersey, of, of what we can do. We can go to New York City on the weekends. We can go swimming in a lake. We go hiking in the, in the forests. So it was great. I, I, I liked uh, Roxbury High School, uh, where I went to high school, because it was a big, big public school. And although it had all the things that you would think of in a school as far as cliques, and mm-hmm. uh, I feel like it was also very open and accepting, considering, uh, I mean, I felt like I kind of floated between. I was some part athlete, part musician, part uh, skateboarder, part everything. So I, I had a lot of friends and I don't feel like I, I ever had to narrow it down to, you know, these five guys are the only people I hang out with the rest of my life. I felt like it, we hung out with everyone. I was also pretty good at academically. So I had my nerdy friends <laughs> and, um, right. yeah, no, it was great. And, um, and then having a family like mine, it was good because although my dad was New Jersey through and through, right. um, I felt like he was very open uh, to different cultures. Like every weekend he'd take us out to eat at some, mm-hmm. like one, like a Jamaican restaurant or a, mm-hmm. or a Vietnamese restaurant or a yeah. Mexican restaurant. Every weekend he was like, hey, we're gonna go out and try something new. And, um, right. and then I had my mother who was, you know, basically um, learning how to speak English as she was raising me. And uh, so, so I had that outside perspective also. Right, right. Do you speak any other languages? My best language besides English is Spanish. I mm-hmm. think all my years in Miami uh, helped me learn how to speak Spanish fairly well. Right. And uh, everything else is just, you know, I could, you know, order at a restaurant or take a taxi somewhere and that's about it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, I've forgotten all my Korean from, from when I was, you know, in preschool. I've forgotten most of that. Oh, Okay. A lot of kids do forget some of it when they have a mom who speaks another language and then they get older and they kind of lose it. But sometimes practice, yeah. helps, you know, mm-hmm. um, speaking of high school in Miami and, and being in college, did you have any mentors growing up and do you keep in touch with them today? Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I would say that uh, it's almost countless. Um, the people I consider to be inspirations or role models. Um, uh, I don't know, I, there, there's probably a hundred, yeah. but um, I mean, I guess first and foremost, I would say my dad, mm-hmm. uh, that sounds like a, like a sappy thing to say, I guess, but, okay. but it really like, right. I, I, till this day, I still look at him and I think, what a great dude. <laughs> I, he's, he's so- making food, I love it. <laughs> Yeah, he's I love so it. friendly. Good. He's, he's progressive he's, for his time. Yeah, um, he's so Korean. friendly. Yeah. He's so curious. He's um, so optimistic, positive, encouraging. Um, I really, he's he's one of my biggest role models as far as uh, you know. I don't ever consciously say. I want to grow up to be my dad, but it just right. happens. It just, ha- I just, as I get older, I do more things like him. Yeah. And, um, and you know, I don't want to throw shade on my mom. She was also fantastic. Her work ethic, mm-hmm. she's very disciplined. She was a disciplined side of uh, the family as far right. as uh, she taught me to work hard and, to, mm-hmm. you know, um, you know, don't accept below average results in any way. And uh, it was a lot of, growing up was a bit challenging because she was very hard on me and we fought a lot yeah but then when I moved out of the house I learned to appreciate everything she did for me and uh and I think it really paid off because she gave me a good kind of um template for how to approach you know tough situations 
Right. And then besides that, I've had great music teachers. Uh, Daryl Bott was a great teacher at Roxbury. Uh, again, I could tell a hundred stories about him, but he right. he was very passionate, very driven. He was um, the band teacher, the band teacher. Yeah. yeah, yeah. he was one of my music teachers. He was the one who convinced me to not quit music when I was like doing a thousand activities. And I'm like, I don't have time for this. And, you know, he's like, I really think you should give it a shot. I really think if you if you kept at it, you would get pretty good at it. But well, he may have you know, saw the gift inside of you. He may have have seen, hey, there's something here that this kid's got, but I don't want him to lose it. He may have. Yeah, seen. when I was a freshman and a sophomore at high school, I was a smart ass, mm -hmm. uh, you know, punk rock, mohawk, skateboarding guy, and and I didn't <laughs> I remember. I didn't, yeah, I didn't take kindly to any teacher, you know, yelling at me or making me stay after class or whatever. And and I'm like, ah, this guy's this guy's crazy. He's too hard. Right. And then I, I, I quit band at, at a certain point wow. and he pulled me aside and said, so you're quitting, huh? I'm like, I am. And wow. he's like, well, I'm going to ask you to, I, I'm, I'm hard on, he told me I'm hard on you because I think you could be good at this. I wouldn't even notice you right. and I'd let you go if, if I didn't think you had it. But I think if you stuck with it, you might be good at music. And uh, so he's like, he's a, he said, I basically, I'm asking you, would you give it one more chance? Sign mm -hmm. up for next fall. If next, by next fall, you're still not having any fun at all. Goodbye. And I did mm -hmm. it. And he was right. I, I, it's somehow you have to get past that tough love stage. Right. And, and, and it, before you start seeing the benefits right. and that's, that's, it's, it's that way with almost anything in life. And you start any new activity, it's awkward, yeah. painful coordination yeah. you're out of shape or whatever and right. then you 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 turn a curve where now you start seeing benefits and payoffs mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um that was good uh, my drum teacher in high school was a guy named tommy igo I've, i still stay in touch with him okay. he lives in san francisco now oh. um mm -hmm. i had a ton of great both faculty member teachers and peers like uh, students at Miami when I went to music school there that I still stay in touch with. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Um, yeah. And um, I also think that all of my years touring in bands, mm -hmm. I've become family with these musicians from all walks of life. I mean, if you just look at the Shakira band alone, yeah, two of the guys that have been doing it with me for 20 years now are a guy named Tim Mitchell and a guy named Albert Menendez. Right. Uh, Tim is from Detroit. Albert's from Cuba. And we are so different from one another, but I feel like I'm more brothers to them than I am to any of my cousins or anything like that. You know, yeah. we're really tight, really tight. And, um, and they're older than me. So I consider them role models too. I grew, I grew up with them. I spent my, you know, my 24 to 48, those years with them. That's a big chunk of your adulthood right there. That's all of yeah. your adulthood right there. I call those VIPs. You're very important people. These are people that uplift you, come alongside you. They're not judgmental, but they're just there for you, you know, mm -hmm. VIPs um, to help support you. You know, what made you want to quit in high school? So if anyone's listening to this and feels discouraged with their passion or they, their creativity, you know, what was it that, want, that made you want to quit? time i think it's uh adversity i think it's a a, a challenge mm -hmm. you know maybe i wasn't ready for a challenge mm -hmm. i maybe i wanted an easy easy road or i wanted uh less work right you know uh, you when you're 14 or 15 you don't know the the benefits right. of hard work you're looking for the easy way out right exactly you want to go ride your yeah. bike you want to go hike. i want to go i want to go ride my bike i want to go watch tv <laughs> i want to go do so i want to go hang out with my friends and i want to do easy things right you don't notice you're not it's too young to know that um you know hard work and persistence will actually lead to something right uh that's something you learn over time that i can look back that now and I could say oh man thank goodness i stuck with this or think now i see why i did that right. you know, if you're asking, like, I mean, that's why if you have some kind of 12 year old and you're telling him to practice piano seven days a week and he's like, screw this and he quits, you know, because right. he doesn't see why anyone would want to do that in their right mind. You know, I'd rather watch cartoons or go ride my bike or go skateboarding. But if um, 
they can get past that point where they start seeing benefits from it. Like, look how much better you're getting because you're putting the time in. Right. That's what you need to get to. You need to get to that level of something where you start seeing results for the time you're putting in. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and you know, it is, it is. And it's hard to convince someone if they don't see it, you right. know, um, that's something. And I, I look at that with so many things, you know, uh, okay. I do martial arts and, uh, when I, and martial arts, it's painful. Yes. <laughs> I get a lot of bruises. <laughs> I get a lot of bruises. I'm sore half the time and, <laughs> and I'm with my classmates and some days I'm like, God, I'm horrible at this. Or I'm, I'm, why am I doing this? Or I can never beat that partner of mine. I mean, we have a classmates and we spar and I'm like, man, I never beat that guy. Right. He's so good. But then some new guy joins the class who's never done it before. And you partner up with him and you know yeah. so much more than that person. Right. You're like, wow, I could wrap this guy into a pretzel in five seconds. <laughs> right. I just, I didn't notice that I have gotten better because I'm with these same classmates and we're all improving together. That's right. So you feel like you're plateaued constantly. Right. You have no way of judging how far you've come or how much better you were than you were um, four years ago. Right. Uh, and that's a thing. So sometimes you don't see the results, so it's discouraging. Right. Or you don't see results, so you want the easy way out. Um, you have to be able to work and trust in the results, trust that results are happening, whether you can see them or not. That's so good. I'm reminded of this picture of an iceberg it, and where it's just a tip, but then underneath you see all the work that was gone, that has gone into something. And then you just see the tip of the iceberg, but you don't know what it took to get there. And it's just, all the way up. Like, aren't you glad you didn't quit? You had Mr. Bach to, to encourage you. And, and also, is this what you do for self-care, the martial arts? Is that part of your uh, self-care routine? Or this is something that you picked up again that you wanted to get good at? When you say self-care, you mean mental or physical or both? Both and even emotional. Something to yeah. that's, that's fun for you. Something to when you're when you're not on tour, right? This is is this something that you go to to, I guess have fun with yeah i think when i when i was when i was younger i used to have like a thousand hobbies and then i got older i got married i had a kid and there's just i had to let a lot of my hobbies go yeah. i have very little time to do anything other than you know what i do but uh i did decide that i wanted to learn a little bit about self-defense so yeah. i started going to this martial arts academy and i found it so fascinating much like you know, 20 years earlier when I, when I bought a used drum set, it was the same. I was like, Whoa, this is so cool. Right. And, um, and then, yeah. And I've been doing it now for about 13 years mm -hmm. and it's, it's, it's fun because yeah, I guess one physically it keeps you in shape. As I get older, I have to, I have to yeah. stretch and, and work out just to keep up. And also mentally it's an incredible both stress reliever and confidence builder oh that's so you good. know i love that and, stress reliever and confidence builder i love that and keeping in shape too because touring is takes a lot out of you that i love that. yeah that's good yeah and um there's also a camaraderie to it like maybe if i were going and doing some activity by myself like maybe i liked mountain biking that's one thing but because I go somewhere and I, I join a class with the same 18 guys every morning and we work out together, there's a bit of like, we can joke around, we can check in on each other, how you doing? And, um, and, and they're not musicians because I'm surrounded by only musicians. And I actually have, I get to talk to people that do other things with their lives. Awesome. So there is, there is something good that I guess is self-care, like you said. Um, but besides that, I guess there's other things I do. Uh, I like to, I like to spend time alone every day. Uh, it doesn't sound, it sounds like antisocial, but I, I feel like I am a better person mm -hmm. if I take an hour to myself every day. So, and often that's in the mornings. I get up before my, my family does and mm -hmm. I'll go get a cup of coffee at six in the morning and read or write in a journal or something. And then I come home, I feel like I'm charged and ready to take on Tuesday or Wednesday or whatever it is. Um, I, I feel love like that. I love that taking an, an hour away 
from everyone, from your family, from, from your job, from everything, just to get a cup of coffee and to journal and just to have take an hour to yourself. That's really, really healthy. That's good. That's really Yeah, great. and then you can revisit the world and the people around you with a much, uh, I guess, a less stressed out yeah. uh, type of energy, a more positive, open, helpful kind of energy, I think. Um, that's something I picked up a long time ago. I don't think any, everyone has to be that way, but I realized that that's me. I, I, I function better like that. I'm a nicer, more stress-free person if I do that. Uh, I do like exercising a lot. So if I'm on the road, I go to the hotel gym every day, at least for you know, 15 minutes to an hour every day. I feel like that's I need that routine. I like healthy food. If I eat junk food, I feel like I'm, I'm regressing. And if I eat healthy food, I feel like I'm progressing. Right. Um, I love that. Say that again. If I eat, <laughs> if I, I, I'm, if I'm I just eat. making stuff up. <laughs> You're dropping some knowledge here. I love it. If I eat unhealthy foods or junk food, I'm regressing. If I eat healthy foods, I'm progressing. progressing. Yeah, that's how I feel. I feel like we don't ever just sit in place. Right. We're either improving or mm -hmm. uh, regressing. I, and that's, you know, it's, Sounds a bit uh, pessimistic to say that, but that's how I feel, at least. That's how you I feel like you're either working toward things or you're slipping. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, reality sets in where there's things like finance, age, yeah. time, that you can't work on everything at the same time. Maybe I'm not as good as, at yoga as I was a while ago. Maybe I don't, I don't read as many books as I did five years ago or whatever. You can't do everything all the time. Right. But so you have to prioritize. You have to say, what are the most important things that I want to maintain or improve upon this year or this month? And I focus on that. Yeah. And um, I think also me being, uh, it helps for me to be uh, quite organized mm -hmm. uh, for my own uh, mental state. I don't, I don't thrive well in chaos. I, uh, I can handle it, but mm -hmm. I, I do better when I, have a plan so pretty much at the start of every week I jot down what I what I have to do that week and uh, before I go to bed I kind of make a little list of things I'm going to do tomorrow right. and I'm not it's not a, a to-do list like if I don't complete this I'm a failure not that kind of to-do list it's right. just what's coming up what's around the corner and right. I can look at it and I can say oh, okay I get it this is what I have to do tomorrow good and then I can rest and uh, I don't I'm not wondering if I'm forgetting something or if I'm late for something. Or I don't. I don't like being that way. I don't like being late. I don't like uh, um, kind of uh, unsure of what's happening. <laughs> I like. I like having a plan. It's just. It suits my personality. So that that helps me is is just being a little on the organized side. Um, it's your thing. Yeah, that's, not a, it's you going. That's that's a good thing. That's yeah. a good some other people that might be super annoying or wait or, <laughs> or a waste of time for me it works great there's no ocd stuff going on it's just your little list stuff going on <laughs> that's just to help organize you um yeah. and question you have something out a new album out i think with various drummers or your favorite i do oh cool 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 yay okay so can you tell us the name and a little bit about this project Cool. Yeah. So I put out a record last week, I think, or two weeks ago, and it's called Drummer Plus Drummer Volume mm -hmm. One. Drummer Plus Drummer Volume One. And uh, basically what I started doing during the pandemic is on Instagram, I started asking friends of mine who are drummers who I loved the way they played. And they had a room much like this, like some kind right. of studio at their house uh, with microphones. I said, hey, would you like to do a duet with me? Mm -hmm. And uh, the best way we can do this is, you know, you you send a beat to me or I'll send a beat to you. And then the other person will like add a part to it and we'll and we'll glue it together. Right. So I started doing that once a week and just. I don't know, just for something to do when the whole world shut down. Right. That's and, how the uh, started, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I did. I did uh, 50 of them in a row, uh, uh, one a week for 50 weeks. And uh it was just so fun and oh, I didn't expect I didn't expect more than eight people to watch it but it wound up becoming quite popular uh 
uh, and strangely outside of the drum circle. I thought it was going to be just for drummers, <laughs> but a lot of people seem to like it. Yeah. So then uh, one day I was just sitting in my studio and I was just listening to the audio uh -huh. from the Instagrams. And I'm like, you know, this might be fun just to have on Spotify or right. Apple Music or something. Yeah. So I asked all the guys, all the drummers uh, that I collaborated with, I asked them, would you mind if I released this like an audio album? Mm -hmm. And uh, pretty much it was like a unanimous yes. So I, I compiled it into what I consider the first volume, which I put mm -hmm. out this month. And then there's a second one basically ready to go, simmering on oh. the stove that I just, I'm just waiting like maybe a couple months before I release that one. Oh, and it's fun okay. because... Um, I believe if you're an artist, you just have to keep creating stuff and you have to keep putting stuff out into the universe. Yeah. And sometimes, uh, sometimes for whatever reason, we can be, we can just get a little uh, backed up Yeah. Uh, and, uh, or we procrastinate or, or time flies basically. Yeah. And uh, so I want to make sure that besides playing concerts for Shakira or for Morrissey, yeah. I want to make sure that I'm, creating stuff with my friends and putting stuff out into the world that like all the time. And that this is part of it is I just want to keep on releasing stuff, whether, you know, a thousand people listen to it or a million, it doesn't matter to me. I love that. I thank you so much because that just encouraged me. That's pretty awesome. I'm going to keep going then with this um, podcast. I love that. I love that. And as a creative, creative, you're always evolving. You know, if people want to get in touch with you because you're a wealth of knowledge, who would have thought you're a drummer and you're you got all this knowledge and your story is just psh. if people want to get in touch with you, how can they get in touch with you? Like what's your Instagram or yeah, well, uh, well, I have a website, brendanbuckley.com, and there's an email address there. If you email me there, I will write back. Um, as long as it's not super offensive or insulting, I will write right. back to you. Right. And then, uh, but I also have all the social media stuff, uh, Facebook and Instagram are at Brendan Buckley. Uh, my Twitter is Brendan Drums, because Brendan Buckley was taken when I joined Twitter. Oh. And uh <laughs> Yeah, what else is out there? There's TikTok or blah blah blah. But I'm very easy to find on the internet because I, uh, I, I guess because tying back to what you asked before about role models, I feel like I've had such good role models in my life that I feel indebted to give back. I love and, that. And, uh, awesome. So I, anytime anyone writes me asking for advice or any questions at all, I feel like I'm not bothered. I feel like. I actually owe it mm -hmm. to the universe to answer these questions or to give back or to, to pass things along. It's I've, I've had nothing but wonderful people in my life up until now. So I feel like yeah, it's my duty to keep that going. So, uh, so that's, that's why I tell people anytime you want to reach out to me, I will, I will try to find the inst the DM or whatever, and I'll try to write back. I thank you so much for being on my podcast. You're like such a blessing. You have no idea. Like I am just, I, I really believe like what you just said is exactly like what was manifested. Here you are. I mean, I've been playing Waka Waka for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> so have I. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you have. Yes, you have. I think you were in the Super Bowl. Were you in the Super Bowl? No, no, you were playing. I think not this year. No, no, no. I did the uh, World Cup though. I did one of the you World, play Cup, World Cup. Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Brendan, you're amazing. Brendan Buckley, you're amazing. You're, and I just want to thank you so, so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to help out a Jersey girl, you know? And No problem. Yeah. And um, I just want to thank you again. And thanks everyone for listening. I'm the core behavioral psychologist, Dr. Trisha Ramper said. Bye, bye, bye everyone. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.